They're not movie stars, they're just D-list celebrities. That means the only thing they have to their name are their titles, their connections to royalty. So the closer that the Megans inch towards Hollywood stardom, the further away they go from the crown in people's eyes, which means eventually their castle's gonna come crumbling down. So we're gonna take a few questions from the audience. Who has a question? They have no questions, they just want their cocktails. What do you, I think you like dropped all the knowledge. Anyone? Anyone? I'm a chatty gal. One question, I know. guys. Get off the stage. Hi. We're gonna have to get more drinks in you guys. Loosen you up. Just get it. Harry and Megan have no shame, and Netflix just proved it. The Megans even use wounded warriors to wallpaper their mansion with dollar bills, all while trying to rebuild their brand. But Reboot 101 just went bust. 96% of the public don't want to see their new Netflix series. That's a shame. Heart of Invictus should be a smash hit. It's unfortunate that the meal ticket in his mouth overshadowed periodically the inspiring, battle-hardened brave hearts. But in between everything, you got Megan out shopping for an Oscar, all while preparing to relaunch her Instagram page, all so she can hawk a $1,000 bronze tanning spray. Then you had a Harry using Netflix as a soapbox so he can exploit his mother, attack the royal family, and lie. You know, the louder a rooster crows, the more likely he's covering for tiny eggs. What's going on, everybody? Netflix has a disaster on their hands, and the Megans are the only ones to blame. When I talk to my son, Archie, about what he wants to be when he grows up, what I remind him is that no matter what you want to be when you grow up, it's your character that matters most. Character is everything, and it only takes the first three minutes into the first episode to understand that a problem prince has absolutely none. Not a zip, zero. See, Harry takes center stage instead of remaining invisible like every other normal producer does, so the camera can solely focus on the real survivors, on the true lion-hearted men and women. Do you not think and it's so about, it's become hidden, like the, the, the Harry fest? Disability. I think the, the no, it's hugely Harry disappointing fest. thing for me is, this is about six individuals who obviously had uh, struggles, a hard time, possibly lost limbs. We should be focusing on them. We, we shouldn't are. be looking at Harry. Yes, he's yes. going to bring in publicity, but we're all here talking about Harry when the conversation should because not even be about Harry. The Megans pollute everything they touch. The Heart of Invictus is no different. The series debuted with a 30% Rotten Tomatoes audience score. I think today it's hovering somewhere around 39 to 45%, give or take a couple of points plus or minus. Now that failure doesn't rest on the veterans' head. Their stories grabbed you by the heart and shine through your television set. That responsibility rests with Prince Hair Plugs and his harp because they sideline the wounded warriors. Also, they could use Netflix to mine more money mint old grievances and refine new lies. My name's Harry. What do you do, Harry? What do I do? He's a grifter. Uh, on any given day, I'm a dad of two under three-year-olds. Uh, I got a couple of dogs, a husband. I'm founding patron of Invictus Games Foundation. Did anyone happen to hear the words royal family, Queen Elizabeth, monarchy? Or what about the great citizens of the UK and the Commonwealth who actually fund the crown? Or Prince William and Princess Catherine? No? Well, neither did anyone else. It might not tally with his anti-firm rhetoric these days, but it was the resources, contacts, and convening power of the crown that made the games possible in the first place. Post Megxit, it might be an inconvenient truth, but it was not just him, but his brother and sister-in-law who have been fighting the good fight for years, especially when it comes to helping the untold millions with depression, anxiety, and other mental illnesses. Right from the jump, Harry followed in Meghan's footsteps to turn history right on its head. Not once did the couple show any kind of appreciation for the royal family. As a matter of fact, the script is written in such a manner where it erases them completely and only magnifies the Meghan's tiny deeds. Good evening, everyone. Get off the <laughs> thank you so much for your service and thank you to all the family and the friends that are here who've been supporting you along the way. Because this is service, this is dedication, and this is the Invictus family. From the first minute, the audience can tell that Netflix cut Walmart Wallace's part right down to the bone. 
Busy night last night? <laughs> yes. <laughs> not that kind of busy. Not that, not that kind, kind of busy. busy. I'm busy. After a couple of years of delays, we're actually finally here. And so what we're going to do run through here is... It's hilariously obvious that Megan had a bigger part to play in this series. She had her producer's binder open on the table with everyone else. But the studio wasn't having any of it. They didn't want the toxic tiaras, sticky fingerprints anywhere on their production. The trauma that I had, I was never really aware of. I didn't have that support structure, that network, or that expert advice to identify what was actually going on with me. Unfortunately, like most of us, the first time you really consider therapy is when you're lying on the floor in the fetal position, probably wishing that you dealt with some of this stuff previously. What truly takes the cake is that a prince of a realm when he was younger had a doctor for every digit and a staff assistant for every whim he dreamed up of. But now as an adult, as a 40 almost year old, he's telling the world that he had no one. Well, that's not only tone deaf to those who literally have nothing and no one around them, but it's a complete lie. It's all about timing. Yeah. And, you know, for me personally, you know, my, my brother, you know, bless him, he was a huge support to me and kept saying, you know, this is not right. This is not normal. You need to talk about stuff. It's okay. And it was Prince William never left his brother's side. It's the other way around. Those are just the facts. I say we have to be thankful to Harry for one thing. Just like he didn't spare, he's now with his series shown his true colors. The spare needed so much attention that he actually crashed Netflix's theater screener. Also, he could puff up his chest and peacock for a little while. That's really not what you do when you're giving a gift from the heart to strangers you never met. You don't jump up and say, hey, let me take credit for it. That's only what someone does when the only thing left inside is false pride. And for Harry, that requires continuous feeding. It's the same for his wife. The Megans always had to feed their egos. Nothing less, always more. Prince William and Princess Catherine gave Harry and Meghan one million dollar donation for Invictus Games Foundation. Isn't it odd how the Megans and their memory works? The couple not only forgot that generous donation to strengthen their organization, but the Royal Foundation that Harry founded with his brother in 2009, the very same one that gave birth to the Invictus Games. I'm founding patron of Invictus Games Foundation. The Duke of Division continued to lie by omission throughout the entire episode, every single one of them. But they weren't big and overt. They were just small twists and turns of little facts, just the way the Megans like them. And, and you wouldn't realize it unless you had studied and watched them from the very beginning. Mental health sort of seemed to run between all the different areas that we were working in. So whether it's homelessness and the military with yourself and addiction with me, and bereavement, yeah. There was a sort of underlying thread, wasn't there, of mental mm. health and this idea that there's all of us coming together to find a common theme. When it came to mental health issues, Harry had more than enough help. The royal trio, whenever they got together, would kickstart a whole slew of charitable foundations to empower people. And Princess Catherine was always at the heart of the ideas. It's your idea. It's your idea. Mr. and Mrs. Hasbin never was, just are who they are. If it doesn't fatten their bank account, put their names up on a billboard, or come with a carpool of paparazzi, they don't give a damn. It does not exist in their mind's eye. And it's the only way you can wrap your head around the way they think. The only way to understand how a half-wit finger puppet, a hater, could actually compare his trivial temper tantrum traumas to that of a real soldier with true battle scars. My life at age 28, there was a circumstance that happened that the, the first few bubbles started coming out and then suddenly it was like someone shook it, it went poof, it went poof, it went poof. And then it was chaos. My emotions were sprayed all over the wall, everywhere I went. One more thing for those who don't know or don't have the facts. Harry was inside of a golden bubble of protection 24-7 all during the war. And I don't think it was the most appropriate time to talk about how he was, because these poor people would come back with, you know, their limbs torn to pieces. And there's Harry with his 16 bathrooms, sort of swanning about how difficult it was. He had protection officers. He had um, mm. all sorts of people looking after him. And he wasn't allowed to do anything dangerous either, because he had about eight of them around him all the time. What takes five hours to finish and later requires an entire bottle of antacids just to summon? That would be listening to the world's most privileged millionaire milksop continue his grievance gospel tour. Stepping foot off the plane, I was angry that this has happened to these guys. I was angry that the media weren't covering it. 
You're a bigger pony than I thought you were. In all my research, I discovered that the British press not only covered every aspect of the war, but they raged against every single person in the government who turned a blind eye to the brutal truth. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? I mean, who could forget this iconic 2009 front page by The Sun? Don't you know there's a bloody war on? The real rub comes when Harry attacks the military for not providing him the emotional support he needed after the war. I guess he still hasn't learned that video was forever. Did you, for example, were you offered psychological support when you came back from Afghanistan? Um, the army, the army uh, put you through a, a day, two day course on the way back through Cyprus, which is, um, which is, I mean, crucial for everybody. The Megans simply don't care about facts. They didn't produce the series out of the charity of their heart to help people. They use their hundred million dollar Netflix deal in order to get rich and create a platform they could strike their enemies from. Heart of Invictus is brilliant. The soldiers' stories, their grit and gravitas pull you right in. How they overcome one obstacle after the other. Those are real heroes that every boy and girl should look up to. Not Harry and Meghan, who pollute every episode with their presence. I'm telling you, if that couple had not been in the series, it'd be number one right now. Instead, it has flatlined. It hasn't even been able to break through Netflix's top 10 chart. So, that's just who the Megans are. They don't care. Out of sight, out of mind. The couple are so spoiled that not even salt could cure them at this stage. But while Harry is waiting to hear back from the streaming giant that he's hit the end of the road with them, Duchess Duplicitous is hatching new plans. Meghan Markle in talks with big-name directors for acting comeback thinks Oscar is in her future. The Dowager of Duplicity is serving double standards like it's high tea. She actually found a way to sucker her super agents over at William Morris to go on the hunt to get her an Oscar-winning picture. At this point, it really doesn't matter if she gets the film or wins an Oscar. It doesn't. It's the message she's sending loud and clear. In my opinion, Meghan is stating the marriage is done. Royal Family Live. Meghan Markle's career rebrand is huge risk as Harry returns to roots. Marriage is just like a house. It cannot survive when its base pillars no longer support the roof. Just like when you have a husband, if he decides one day, I'm going to take the right path and I want a simpler, quieter life. Or the wife's going, I'm going to take the left lane. I want to head for the Hollywood Hills in search of stardom. The only thing the couple are going to hear is the ceiling coming crashing down. And on top of that, just on the eve of Invictus's premiere, on the anniversary of Princess Diana's passing, Harry's mother, you had Megan's former Suits producer somehow thought it was a good idea that he would steal some of the lightning from Harry's debut. I didn't like it. Suits creator was furious with royal family, changing his script to protect Meghan Markle's modesty before public fallout. Now we have to set the record straight because this is complete BS. Queen Elizabeth II did not give a lick about what one virtue signaling vagabond had to say on a backwater D-list cable television channel. None. Period. End of statement. On the other hand, Meghan was only riding Harry's publicity coattails for Heart of Invictus so she could grab another headline. That's it. A wife betraying her husband, taking a little limelight away from him for another spotlight. That's why the Look at Me Leech right now is looking for a backdoor into Hollywood. Meghan Markle's $1 million a post Instagram payday. Duchess of Sussex is preparing to relaunch herself on social media. And experts say she could earn millions with everyone in Hollywood talking about it. Now, Meghan Markle might actually make that kind of money for a short while. But you know what she doesn't realize? I guarantee you she's going to transform her royal coach back into a pumpkin. The experts are wrong because they're missing a key point. See, the Megans don't have any talent. They have zero skills. They're not movie stars. They're just D-list celebrities. That means the only thing they have to their name are their titles, their connections to royalty. So the closer that the Megans inch towards Hollywood stardom, the further away they go from the crown in people's eyes, which means eventually their castle is going to come crumbling down. That's the great news for everybody who loves the monarchy. Megan just hasn't figured it out yet. It's kind of like what my granddad said. The more you inflate a balloon, the sooner it gets till it pops and the whole world sees that it's nothing but empty inside. So until we have that day where we pull out the popcorn, we always have a true royal gem to light the way. Character is truly everything. To hold on to it, all you got to do is remember that we never bow down, we never bend the knee. 
always forward. Then, suddenly, it happened.